afternoon. Many thanks for being here for the first committee call uh, of the year for the provide service. Uh, and today we will have a uh, main topic dedicated to the presentation of the main results of the report current state and future directions for open repositories in Europe. Um, and for this presentation, uh, we have Ale Rodrigues from University of Minho, and I would like to, to thank, thank you for, for accepting our invitation to present these main results. So, and today we will have uh, two main parts of our meeting. The first part will be dedicated to present this report. And then in second part, uh, and briefly, we will present some updates and novelties regarding the uh, regarding open air provider related services. And if, if you have some questions about provide, uh, you, you, we can dedicate some time at the end also. Um, in first part, so Eloy Rodriguez will be presenting the, the report and we will have also time for, for some questions. So now I'm giving the floor to Eloy Rodriguez. I'm, I stop share my screen. Thank you, Andre. I think you are already seeing my screen, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for, for the, the opportunity to, to participate and to present the, the, the main results of the survey of uh, open repositories in Europe uh, that was conducted uh, last year. As Andreas said, I'll try to present uh, uh, some of the main results. Then, of course, you have the, the report is available and you can go through it uh, 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 in uh, around 15 minutes and then to save some time uh, at the end too, so we can have some questions or discussion, because I, I'm really sorry, but I have to go in, in half an hour, I have another meeting starting at uh, three o'clock, so I need to attend. Uh, as you may, uh, most of you probably will remember, uh, uh, the survey was the first step of uh, joint activity to strengthen uh, European repositories that was launched by COAR, Liber, Spark, Europe, and OpenAir at the beginning of 2023. And the first activity uh, that we decided to conduct was a survey that was conducted in February and March of, uh, 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 of last year. And, uh, and the report that was published uh, uh, in, in December uh, as the main uh, it presents the, the results from, from that survey. The survey, we, we collect uh, 30, uh, 394 uh, uh, valid responses. We had more, uh, more than 400, 440 responses, but uh, there are uh, many uh, were not uh, uh, completed or just have a very few uh, questions or were repeated. Uh, and so we, we consider 394 responses from the 34 uh, countries, uh, as you may see, there is a spread of uh, of responses uh, from uh, most European countries, and uh, we had ten countries where we have more than fifty responses. And for a couple a couple of of questions, we analyzed uh, because of the complexity. We analyzed uh, 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 those of, uh, ten countries that had more than uh, 50, uh, 50 responses. The majority of uh, of uh, uh, the the respondents and and the, the uh, and the repositories, uh, uh, three quarters, of, uh, almost seventy five percent of repositories are based uh, in uh, in uh, universities, and uh, uh, then we had also uh, around forty percent that were based in in other research uh, uh, units. Uh, again, as I said at the beginning, I will just uh, uh, show uh, the the results. Uh, of uh, some of the questions, probably the majority of the questions anyway, but but not all of them. So the, the on the report, you will find some more questions than the, the ones that I will, and results and the ones that I will address here. So regarding the, the, the content type on repository, so we found that uh, a big variety of content uh, types in repositories, but uh, and we need to interpret this uh, this slide. So we uh, we asked what were the the three main. Uh, we identify what were the three main 
uh, uh, content types in repositories. And so uh, uh, articles, published articles, were on the three main content types of uh, three quarters of 75 uh, uh, um, uh, percent of uh, repositories. Uh, uh, also, uh, thesis and dissertation, 57%, uh, uh, and all the other numbers that you see. And uh, and research data was uh, uh, was uh, um, also uh, 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 the, was on the three most uh, 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 common content types in twenty one percent of uh, repositories. Once, just a very quick comment: <clears throat> uh, uh, we had uh, uh, data repositories and publication repositories uh, reply. So. Uh, 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 Repositories were the the, mo the the most frequent content type was data, and repositories were the most content uh, frequent the most frequent content type was publications. That was the majority, and on the publication uh, repositories or where uh, publications were the most common uh, content type, we found a great a great variety of of content types, while in repositories, on data repositories or repositories where data was the most frequent content type, the variety of content types were, were, were uh, less frequent, so they were more kind of more specialized in, in data. Uh, regarding the size of the collections, uh, there was also a, 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 a huge uh, variety with uh, around uh, 20% or a little bit more than 20% are really small repositories with uh, less than 1,000 uh, uh, um, uh, items. And, uh, uh, but the, the, the vast majority has uh, between 1,000 and 50,000 items. So uh, uh, around uh, almost 60% uh, uh, of, uh, of repositories are on that kind of, uh, of size. Uh, and then uh, we also have a, a, a small number of very uh, big repositories. So uh, uh, Europe uh, PMC uh, has replied also to to the survey, and they have uh, reported eight million uh, uh, items on the repository. Uh, we have done an average uh, for both for institutional repositories and for other types of repositories, so domain data repository and national. And for the institutional repositories, the average uh, collection size is uh, uh, roughly around 65,000 items, while for the other types of repositories, the average collection size is uh, uh, close to 400,000 uh, items. Uh, also regarding the, the language, there is a, a, a kind of a variety of language is while uh, uh, the majority of uh, uh, repository English is is the most common, most used language. In in uh, several countries is the is the most uh, uh, used uh, language, but in other countries we have uh, the 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 national languages uh, uh, were the, the the most used. And that's the case uh, uh, for instance for for uh, for Croatia, Portugal, Poland, uh, and, and and Spain for for instance. And, and then we have the, the other the other uh, um, uh, English is also present uh, as the second most common uh, language on those countries. Uh, we also had a question about uh, the participation or if the repository was part of uh, a national uh, uh, level service or network, and we have almost 50-50% uh, uh, replies from uh, uh, 51 said yes and 49 said no. As you can see here, uh, there there is big differences between countries. So uh, there is, uh, for instance, uh, 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 in Spain, uh, uh, Portugal, uh, uh, Croatia, the vast majority of uh, of repositories replied that were part of a national service or network, while in other while in other uh, countries, like for instance, uh, Germany uh, or, or Switzerland, uh, the, uh, it was the other way around. The vast majority said that uh, they were not part of national network. And also, uh, 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 while we analyze the, the replies even for country, we understand that that might be some inconsistency on the replies because we are from the same countries, uh, repositories or the same type of repositories saying that they are part of a national service network and others say no. And that might be the case that uh, some are part and some are not. But I've, in other cases, we have we, sus we have a suspicion that uh, there was not a common understanding of what was a national service or or, or network. Uh, 
uh, where uh, also the question about where the repository was uh, uh, hosted. Uh, as you can see here, uh, around 60%, uh, probably a bit more than 60%, were locally hosted, but there is already also a, a significant number of repositories that are hosted by an external uh, provider. And there is also variations on, on also at the national level here. Regarding the, the, the software platform used for by the repository, as you can see here, uh, this space uh, represents more than 40% of uh, or hosts uh, more than 40% of European repositories and other uh, very uh, used uh, platforms are ePrint, uh, Fedori, Landora. Uh, uh, there are also uh, other like Invenio, Opus, and uh, and other and Pure uh, also that were indicated as. Uh, as uh, uh, being used for, for the repository. And there is also 80% of uh, locally, so the reported locally uh, um, uh, developed the platforms that are hosting uh, the, the repositories. Uh, one very important uh, thing is that uh, uh, more than 60% of repositories said that they have installed add-ons or patches. So they, have not, they are not running on the vanilla code of the platform but they have uh, installed uh, uh, some kind of, uh, they have made some kind of localization or add-ons or patches. And uh, that if you uh, count that uh, also 16% reply that they don't know. So probably at least some of those 16% were also, have also uh, patches and add-ons. So probably the, the, the percentage of uh, uh, repositories that have uh, kind of some kind of uh, additional code uh, uh, on top of the the, the 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 base code of the of the platform is probably close to 70 percent then of 60 percent uh, we uh, asked also when was the last time that the platform uh, went through a, a major upgrade and when was the the next upgrade plan and uh, we are kind of uh, at least I was a little bit surprised because uh, because uh, apparently the uh, uh, the vast majority of repositories were uh, 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 upgraded kind of uh, recently, so uh, we have uh, 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 about uh, um, uh, more than sixty percent that were upgraded on the last uh, three years, and if we count for four years or so since uh, nineteen, it's uh, uh, almost uh, eighty percent, and. Uh, the uh, they the repositories also reported that were uh, almost half of them were planning to upgrade in 2023 it's it's not clear if that is really happened this is may be related with this space 7 upgrade and probably because of uh, 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 maybe this is a uh, kind of postponed for 2024, but there was already uh, uh, also 14% of repositories that were planning to to upgrade uh, this year or, or next year. But uh, there is also, there was also a significant number of repositories that uh, didn't have any plan to, to for 36% for, uh, to, to, for upgrades. One important, very important uh, aspect for us is that uh, uh, regarding uh, open air uh, guidelines compliance, that uh, 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 only 22% of uh, repositories uh, reported that they are compliant with version four of uh, of open air guidelines, and we have uh, all, uh, more than 25% that uh, uh, that say that they are they are not compliant with any uh, 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 open air guidelines, and 42% that were. Uh, uh, compliant with old versions of the open air guidelines. So this is something that we need really to take into consideration. Regarding IDs, uh, uh, the, regarding uh, uh, um, uh, object IDs, uh, so resources IDs, uh, the majority of repositories uh, 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 are using uh, persistent identifiers like DOIs or handles. So only 10% did not assign any type of of persistent identifier, but uh, uh, the, the situation is different uh, regarding author identifiers, where the percentage of repositories that are not using any type of author identifiers is uh, 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 significant. It's uh, about one quarter, so 25%. Most repositories uh, uh, have in place uh, curation uh, processes, uh, so again, only 
a, a small number, 23 uh, of the re respondents say that they have no curation processes. And also a similar situation uh, we have uh, uh, regarding statistics. So the majority of uh, repositories uh, said that they they uh, they have some kind of uh, statistical uh, services. The majority have local repository statistics, but then also uh, and only a small fraction of uh, around uh, uh, ten percent or less than ten percent said that they have no uh, statistical uh, uh, information. They are not collecting any statistical information. Uh, <clears throat> regarding preservation uh, policy, also. Uh, the vast majority of repositories said that they have a preservation policy, but again, but still the number of uh, repositories with no preservation uh, policy is uh, still very uh, important also. Uh, and uh, and regarding certification, the situation is even more, uh, um, uh, uh, can, the, the, the number that they have no, no certification is even uh, uh, higher because uh, uh, only 82 of uh, of the, the more than 350 uh, respondents of this question uh, uh, said that they have uh, that they went through certification. And then if we look at uh, uh, at what they have replied, because we asked what type of certification they went through, then if we look to the re to replies, then we understand that even of those 82, uh, some uh, uh, have not really go any, uh, they did not went really any type of real certification because, uh, for instance, open air compliance is is about uh, complying with the uh, with the guidelines is not really a, a certification. So um, the, the the situation here is uh, so uh, just a small number of repositories are real uh, have really went through a certification process. Uh, one important question that we had, uh, and the one that was really also hard to 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 analyze, because again we we and we then understand that uh, uh, some people uh, did not reply, did not understand what uh, the concept of FTEs, and have not uh, so, and we had we had kind of uh, uh, and that produced kind of outliers that we had to, to uh, exclude from the analysis, but uh, so. Uh, with the clean data that we have come to uh, up with, uh, uh, we, you, as you can see, the the majority of uh, repositories have uh, uh, up to two FTEs, uh, uh, and that's the 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 most frequent case for institutional repositories, and uh, and then uh, there is uh, but there is still uh, a significant number of repositories that have uh, up to four or up to eight uh, uh, FTEs. But then when we asked uh, how the, uh, the time of those FTEs were applied uh, in, in, the, in the repository. And uh, as you can see, uh, around half of the effort of, uh, of the staff effort is, uh, is, uh, is going through metadata and content curation. And then 27% uh, 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 is effort for the repository manage, uh, manager. And almost uh, twenty percent is for for technical for technical support. So the last uh, questions that we had was were about the challenges uh, for for the for the repository, and and as you can see here, the the mo the main challenge uh, that was identified was upgrading the software to to new versions and uh, also uh, uh, employ skilled staff and under funding and. Uh, the 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 for instance the content recruitment that probably was uh, something that in uh, some time ago or uh, in other contexts we hear uh, a, a lot of as a main problem was not uh, ranked as one of the of the biggest uh, one of the biggest uh, um, uh, problems here uh, and uh, we asked what type of activities would be most most helpful to 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 address the the the, the challenges, and uh, this is also a bit of a surprise because the the the, the thing that was most uh, that is clear that it was ranked uh, first is was advocacy, and and then the uh, uh, the other two were related with a community with a community of practice for for technical support and uh, coordination of repositories at national or regional uh, uh, level. We have also significant number of replies for training 
and a, a lower number uh, of uh, replies for, uh, for regarding uh, a, a national regional platform for hosting repositories. And this is also something that is interesting. So to conclude and to have at least five minutes for, for questions and take a little bit more time that I, that I expected, uh, uh, the main conclusion is that uh, uh, collectively European repositories, uh, they really are an important asset uh, and a very important uh, part of the infrastructure for for the for open science in Europe, because they probably collectively they 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 they, they provide access to to tens or probably hundreds of millions of uh, research outputs of different uh, of different types, and. Uh, uh, the majority, uh, so about three quarters of repositories are based in universities, and the universities are uh, uh, well, uh, uh, long uh, sustained and well established uh, institutions. Uh, uh, they, I think, they 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 have uh, they provide a kind of a sustainability for the repositories, and the current collections are are being well used by 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 the research community and 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 not only the research community. But we have identified also three main challenges. Uh, one is uh, maintaining the, the 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 current infrastructure, especially the the software platform. So maintaining and updating, especially updating uh, software platforms. Uh, then uh, uh, applying. Uh, uh, Good practices in terms of uh, metadata preservation and uh, and user statistics, a and the third is the the to to secure appropriate visibility on the scholarly ecosystem, and these challenges were related with three things that are also kind of interconnected. One is the fact of managing uh, local uh, software, uh, and, uh, and I think the first uh, and the third are in a way also uh, uh, connected. This is one of the strengths, of course, of repositories, the, the distributed nature uh, uh, and the fact that they are running uh, uh, open source software uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the in, in, in the uh, that replies to, to local needs. But the fact that they are addressing local needs and they have the customization and handouts and patches is also a problem, for instance, for the upgrade of, of, the, of the software uh, platforms. And the distributed nature of repositories makes that uh, in some cases they, they might be uh, uh, working more than uh, uh, like uh, silos uh, and uh, they are uh, replicating uh, uh, the same activities and having the same problems in uh, in different institutions, not creating or not being able to create a kind of economy of scale or uh, trying to address some uh, problems and, uh, and challenges on, uh, on, uh, on a collective way. And of course, the, the the third point is the staffing levels of repositories that is uh, that is low. But uh, also, we point out some opportunities. I think uh, on the last uh, year, uh, the last couple of years, especially into twenty twenty three, while we were analyzing repository, there is a kind of a change of climate in, in Europe regarding uh, repositories and and uh, not for profit infrastructures for scholarly communication. And probably the two main examples were the council conclusions from May and also the the most recent document from Coalition as about to uh, the call towards responsible publishing that uh, really uh, uh, puts the emphasis on on making the, the scholarly community and scholarly institutions and not for profit organizations on the driver's seat of scholarly communication and this growing interest on on this model of publish review curate uh, that uh, that where repositories and preprint servers are really at the center of the system so uh, on the next couple of months, by the way, we will have the first meeting now in January. Uh, Open Air, Lever, Spark, uh, uh, Europe, and Coar uh, will will work together to 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 develop uh, uh, concrete plans and actions uh, on three main areas. So one is advocacy, uh, highlighting the value of repositories. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, to propagate best practices. For, for repositories across the, 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 the repository community. And the third one on assisting with the creation and coordination of uh, national networks. So as I said, the report is uh, available uh, in uh, uh, in Zenodo, so you can uh, go through it. And by the way, just to finish and stop sharing my, my screen, uh, 
if you already uh, if you have ideas and suggestions on uh, how uh, open air spark uh, europe core and liver can uh, really contribute to address these challenges uh, then we will uh, be very happy to hear from you and i stop here and i have five minutes i'm sorry have five just five minutes for questions or comments many thanks Aloy, for your presentation so uh, until now we don't have any question in the chat but uh, please feel free to have your questions in the chat or open your microphone and then put your question as we have some time for a comment uh, on the results that yeah. will present us For sure, um, OpenAir will share some of the upcoming developments. Um, what these ne next steps that I refer, so we we will also try to to bring you these these novelties in the provide community calls, so you can follow up these developments. <clears throat> okay. If we do not have any questions, I think uh, we can move on to the second part. And I like many things mm. for your presentation. It was very relevant mm. um, to, to to present these main results and then uh, people can can go uh, to the report and see more more detailed information if they want to know yeah, more. Just, yeah, just uh as we st I still have one minute let okay. me just st stress again this uh so this work these are the three areas that we have identified so advocacy uh uh, uh best practices and coordination of uh, uh of national uh, repository networks and uh, as I said uh, we will have the first meeting of the uh, of this organization at the end uh, in a couple of weeks so if you have uh, uh ideas or, su or suggestions on actions that uh uh, open air in the, in, the, in the case of open air uh, that we can take to to advance uh, on this uh, uh, we will be really uh, 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 glad and we will welcome your uh, comments and and suggestions okay so thank you very much and as i said i'm sorry but i really need to go to to another meeting okay okay so bye much. okay bye. thank you bye so now uh we can have some additional minutes. Let me share again my screen. Just to um, present some of uh, recent news regarding open air providers and related services. So regarding the index uh, and the statistics at up the date, uh, the current contents that are, that are published in the open air portals are still referring to the update that occurred in November last year. However, the, the, the upcoming update uh, will occur during this month. So in, in the upcoming days or weeks, the, the contents, the most recent contents will be published. Uh, you can always follow these these two pages to follow the, the updates and to know the, the changes and, and updates in each version of the open air graph. So if you are waiting for some content update or from your repository, uh, the updates will occur briefly. Uh, <clears throat> Second update I have is also related with the open air graph update. So this last update from November introduced some novelties, um, and we have here three of them. You can you can read uh, more detailed information about these updates on these uh, news items that uh, is linked here. 
So uh, in this version, <clears throat> the open graph improved the, the affiliation extraction. So I've um, introduced uh, the, the affiliation information to, to more uh, publications. And this can, can improve um, the way the, that the open air graph can be reused. <clears throat> this version also introduces uh, the field of science for additional uh, uh, four and, uh, 40 million publications. So uh, <clears throat> open air graph already have uh, fields of science for some publications, but in this version, um, open air graph has for additional considerable number of publications, the fields of science. And you can explore uh, this uh, accessing and searching for publications in Open Air Explore. One of the novelties is also the integration of the citations from the open, open citations POCI dataset. Um, open Air, uh, in the context of, of Open Air Nexus project that uh, ended last year, have worked uh, with um, open citations, starting to include their data set, their data sets about citations. So uh, accessing the open air graph, uh, you can also explore this possibility. Uh, in the in the upcoming updates of open air graph, uh, it's, it's expected to have uh, also, uh, let's say, um, a user interface uh, to to explore um, the the citations that comes from the open citations. Okay, data set. And uh, as uh, always, we we will we want to to highlight our public roadmap in which you can follow the upcoming updates. You can also contribute, having comments uh, for some you know, features you would like to have or to improve in the provide dashboard. Uh, and also important, um, our help desk support. So every time you have questions, you can uh, write to, to the help desk uh, of OpenAir, to this email, help desk at openair.eu. Uh, OpenAir have uh, a new ticket system. So sending messages to this email address, uh, your message will be managed in the ticket system and redirected to the proper person uh, to, to reply to your question. Um, we all, we want also to highlight two upcoming events that we think can be useful for you. The first is the Open Air Coffee Break on integrating, integrating our keys in repositories and query systems. Um, it will be next week uh, on Monday. Uh, you have here the, the link to, to find the URL to register in order to attend this, this event. Um, and also regarding the Open Air Graph, uh, this service will also start running community calls. And the first community call will be also next week, uh, in the 17th of January at 11 Central European time. And uh, it, 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 it's a great opportunity to follow the, the upcoming uh, and the most recent uh, novelties regarding Open Air Graph. Um, this session will be managed by Paulo Mangi, the, the, the CTO of Open Air. So it, it will be a good opportunity for you to know more and also to put questions directly to, to Paulo Mangi to know more or to ask, for example, for some. Um, uh, development of futures regarding the access to the open air graph of the way that open air is uh, managing the, the information in their ecosystem. So you, you can also find on this URL the link to register and um, hope you, you can find this, uh, these two events useful for you. Um, and as usual, we try al always to record the sessions. So even if, if you cannot attend uh, the sessions, they will be made available for you to, 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 to see um, these, these events. Just to, to finalize, 
regarding the open and provide community calls. Um, so we already have scheduled the community calls for this first semester of the year. So we, you can already register and uh, schedule in your calendars, the upcoming meetings. The main topics are not yet defined, but uh, month by month, we will specify the, the items that will be discussed in the, in the community calls. So feel free to register. And finally, uh, an highlight to our newsletter. Um, and with this newsletter, we are trying to disseminate the community call and also uh, highlight some novelties regarding not also the provides dashboard, but also some related topics um, about open air and also uh, relevant um, subjects for uh, data source managers. And that's it from my side. Uh, if you want uh, to put some questions about some things uh, regarding the open air provides uh, dashboards or uh, something related with your data source registration in open air, um so we have we have time uh, in the meeting so you can always use our dot desk system but if you want to put, to raise some question here you can also do let me check the chat okay we have here the, the, the link to register in the ARCID session. Thank you, Irina. Okay. If we do not have any question, um, we can close this session. Today it was a bit uh, uh, small, this, this session, but I think it was useful. To, to see this overview of the main results of the report that Alain Rodriguez shared with, with us. You can see more detailed information in the report. And for sure, in the upcoming committee calls, we will share with you the, the upcoming developments regarding <clears throat> the next steps that uh, Eloy uh, shared with, with us. Okay, so we can close the meeting and uh, see you soon. Many thanks. Thank you, too. Bye-bye.